Well, hey, folks, welcome back to the cabin workshop and to another addition to my Backwoods Logic series. Today, I'm going to show you a very cheap but yet very effective method of keeping ants and rodents under control. So come on in, let's get started. Several years ago, when I lived in New Hampshire, I had been hearing flying squirrels up in my attic. I kept meaning to get up there and set traps and eliminate them. Unfortunately, I procrastinated too long. They got into the wiring and burnt the house down. Valuable lesson learned there in procrastination. So when I built the cabin here in New York, I made sure I buttoned that place up tight. There were no cracks whatsoever anywhere that a rodent could enter. I avoided using fiberglass insulation in the floor. That is just a haven for rodents. So far, about a decade has gone by. I haven't had the slightest evidence of a rodent in the cabin, not even in the attic. Nothing. It's been mission accomplished. The New Hampshire cabin's a different story. I'll be talking about that very shortly. Here, I have ants every year. Doesn't take me long to wipe them out, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. When I built this place, I got a really good deal on three inch thick foam insulation. Four by eight sheets that had a paper glued on each side. It's a great deal. The R factor is good. It went down quick. Great in that regard. Unfortunately, the ants absolutely love it, and I will never build with foam insulation again. <laughs> Every year I get ants to come in, I can see it trickling down through the ceiling boards. Sometimes when I close my attic stair, I see it trickling down. I'll get up there, I'll put out my homemade ant poison. Usually within a week, the colony is wiped out. I'm good for another year. Here it is again, the following summer. I'm starting to have some ants. So I'm going to make up a batch of my ant poison here. Very simple concoction. This has been around for a long time. There's a lot of folks that are unaware of it. So I'm going to show you very, very simple method now to wipe out your rodent population and your ant population and do so very cheaply. So all I need for my ant poison is simple old borax. You find that in a grocery store. Some hot water and some sugar. In the past, I always used simple white sugar. I've kind of gotten away from it, so I'm using brown sugar today. I'm certain it'll work just as good. All I do here is mix roughly equal parts of the borax with the sugar, stir in a little hot water to get like a maple syrup type consistency, and that's it. I can't say that I have ever measured it. I've been using this concoction now for probably 25 years or better with excellent success. Mix equal parts of borax and sugar and stir in hot water until the mixture is dissolved. That looks pretty good. That ought to work just fine. Then all I do is fill up some beer caps or the cap from a jar. This is a little piece off of an old Dixie cup. I just set out these little containers places where the ants are traveling. Now because I'm making a poison, I'm going to make sure I keep it out of the reach of any pets. My ant problem is up in my attic. That's where the poison's going to go. I have no worries that Frankie's going to get into it. You won't see instant gratification like when you're spraying a can of Raid or something like that. But trust me folks, if this didn't work, I wouldn't be using it for 25 years or so. Let the ants come to it. They'll circle around it like it's a water hole out in the desert. 
they'll fill up, they'll carry it back to the colony. You'll see a train of ants coming and going to this. Let them fill up, just leave them alone, let them do their thing. They'll bring it all back to the colony and it'll wipe out the colony. Might take a week, something like that. It's gonna work, it's gonna work just great. Like almost overnight, you're gonna start to see dead ants all over the place. In my New Hampshire cabin, I had pine boards in the ceiling and they had dried out quite a bit from using wood heat for so many years. One time, the ants were just tossing the dead ants through the cracks in the boards. There was dead ants falling all over the place. It was kind of creepy. But right then and there, I knew I had a keeper. Someone told me about this poison. I was using it. It works fantastic. So give it a go. Now I'm going to shoot back to the New Hampshire place. And I'll show you how I'm going to wipe those rodents out of that camp. And in my renovation, I'm buttoning that place up and I'm going to do my best to make it so no, ant, no rodents can return. I'm going to wipe out the population on the inside, make it so no new ones can come in and colonize. Should be good to go. I've used just about every type of mouse trap there is. The best repeating mouse trap is the simplest thing. I'm going to show you the process here. My friend Will does the same thing over in Wisconsin. Quite a few of my friends that have deer camps use the same type. So I'm going to cut down on the population here. I'm going to set out a couple bucket traps. I'll show you what I got going on. A very effective mousetrap can be made by simply suspending a baited tin can over a bucket of water. And a PBR can works the best because in this camp, PBR stands for a peanut butter roller. Yes. So I broke the tab off, and then right there in the center, it's going to drill a little hole, a little hole in the bottom. I'm using just these stiff wires here. These are made for holding up insulation, but any wire will work. I just find that the stiffer the better. That way when you're threading it through the can, it's easy to find the other hole. But it doesn't matter what you use. I like to keep the can down in the bucket a little ways. So I'm just going to drill a hole right beneath this rim. Same thing on the opposite side. Feed it through the bottom of the can first. That way if I have to help guide it, with my finger through that hole. I didn't have to here. And then through there. And there we go. Then I smear peanut butter onto the can and stick sunflower seeds right to it. After a few catches are made and my success rate slows down, I'll switch out the seeds for salty crackers or sweets like marshmallows. These buckets are equally effective for rats and chipmunks as well. So I just take a piece of scrap lumber, it doesn't matter how wide it is, a couple feet long or so, and I put two nails in through the end, a few inches down, and that just grips the edge of the bucket like that. Then the mice come up, they look down at that can with the peanut butter and the seed, jump onto it, it spins, and in the water they go. This is about the best repeating mouse trap I've ever used. Very, very simple to make made out of all scraps anyway it doesn't cost anything i don't have the can up at the top i don't like it up at the top because they could come up and just be licking at the can but if they walked up the plant then they kind of got to leap down and once they do that they're already committed they roll down into the drink and it's all done Well, we got a six pack on the first check. It's not too bad. I just want to freshen up the water. It gets kind of stinky after a few days if you got mice floating in it. We got a six pack on the first check, so that's pretty good. So I'll get this reset, stick it back in the attic, see how many we can get this week. Well, there you go, folks. 
a few simple but effective methods of keeping your ant and rodent populations under control. I hope you found the video to be beneficial, and if you did, that you'll click the subscribe button down below. That way you can be updated on all my new postings. If a few weeks to a month goes by and I haven't posted anything, it's just because I'm at my cabin, and when I'm working on mobile data, I can't upload anything. But I do put updates on my Boss of the Swamp Facebook page. So if you're wondering where I'm at, you can always go over there and check. So all the best to you, and God bless.